Ain't nobody got time for that. Hey, Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you're looking for from Power Director University. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on time codes and countdowns. So, let's jump right into Power Director 15 Ultimate and make it happen. Alright Power Director peeps, here we are in Power Director 15 Ultimate. Before I get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Power Director University to get great tutorials, tips, and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's get into this time code thing. All right, so there's not a time code feature within Power Director, so you have to go out and get some clips that you can use as a time code. So I went to a website called mediacollege.com, and I will have the link to this site in the video description, of course. And on this page, you can get some time codes for your videos. So the one that I ended up downloading for the tutorial is the 29.97 frames per second NTSC because I'm in an NTSC region and the clips that I'm using on my timeline and my timeline is set to 29.97 frames per second. And I wanted to use a one minute clip. So this is my option, quick time. So that's what I downloaded. So you can see I have two clips in the timeline. One is of some guys racing some bikes and the other one is of a lady starting to do a backstroke. So first thing I need to do is make sure that my timeline is set up to match my clips and to match my time code because I want my time code to be accurate. And you have to have the right frames per second set up in order to do that. So I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to stay on the general section. And for timeline frame rate, right now I have it set to 24 frames per second because that's what I usually film with and things like that. But for this, I need to change it. And I'm in the NTSC region, so I'm choosing that. And then it has 30 frames per second. Now my clip's 29.97, but we'll take care of that. When I choose 30 frames per second, it automatically goes to use drop frame time code because I chose NTSC really so I know that it's probably 29.97 frames per second. Now if I chose the 30 frames per second NTSC and it truly is 30 frames per second, then I could just change this to no and it, it would really be 30 frames per second. It would not use any drop frames. I have a 29.97, so I'm gonna leave it set to yes for use drop frame time code. And now I'm gonna click on okay. All right, so for this first clip of the bikes, I just want to have a visual of the time that's going by for the race. So I'm gonna drag this down underneath the bikes to track two. And now I need to size this up. So I'm gonna place my cursor over one of these nodes. I'm gonna place it here till I see a line and two arrows. And I'm gonna hold down my left mouse. I'm gonna drag this down to a size that I like. And that's pretty good there. Now I'm gonna place my cursor over it until I see crosshairs with four arrows and I'm gonna drag it to where I want it to be. And right there's a pretty good spot. So now that I have it in a position that I want and I have it sized up how I want, I need to make sure that it's only the amount of time that I need. So I'm going to click on the time here in the timeline and I'm gonna move my scrubber to this position near the end of the clip. Now I'm gonna make sure that I have this set to seek by frame and now that i know that it's seek by frame i'm going to use this little button here to go to the previous frame 
until I see the video. And there it is. So I'm gonna go one frame out. So now I'm gonna click on the timeline to make sure that none of the clips are selected. And now I'm going to click on split timeline and that's going to split all the clips on all the timeline tracks wherever my playhead is at. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click on this little end of this clip that I don't want. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to click on the end of the timeline or time code. And now I'm going to click on remove the selected clip. And I'm going to remove and leave gap. So now that I have that done, what will happen when I play this back is it'll play the clip and it'll also play the time until it reaches the end here. And since this time code is a minute long, it's enough to cover the entire clip. So it'll end precisely at the right time that this clip ends. And there you go. So we're good with that. So now let's say I wanted to count down and I wanted to count any other direction. So if I want to do a countdown, I can go ahead and drag the timeline clip to this swimmer here. And once again, I need to size this up. So I'm going to do that and place this where I want it. Now the next thing I need to do is move my playhead to a position where I want the countdown to end. And I think that's pretty good there. So I'm going to click on the timeline once again to make sure that none of the clips are selected. And I'm going to click on split timeline. Now for this clip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this to make sure that it's selected. I'm going to go to tools, power tools, and video in reverse. So what that's going to do is it's going to make this clip of the time code play in reverse for the amount of time that it exists. So because I split it here, it only exists for one minute and, oh, I'm sorry, one second and 25 frames. So it's gonna play backwards in reverse and it'll count down. So if there was more time, it would count down from a longer period of time. So I'm gonna remove this clip at the end because I don't need it. So I'm just gonna click on the clip and then click on remove the selected clip. And now if I play this, it's just going to count down to zero, boom, and then she takes off. So let's say after this piece, I wanted to record the time of the race. Well, then all I need to do is do what I did for the first one. Drag this clip down, add it to the timeline, Come to the end of the clip, wherever it might be. Split the end off. Uh, place it where I want it. Maybe I want to put it in a different position now because I just want to, let's just say. Let's say for the race, I want it up here instead. So now when I play this back, it'll count down and then it'll count up. And that's it, people. Time code, countdown, it's going down. All right, Power Director Peeps, I want to thank you so much for watching that video all the way through to the end. It really means the world to me. Now, I want to give a quick shout out to one of my subscribers. Jeff Black Music. Jeff Black Music makes music videos and guitar building videos. So if you're into music and if you're into guitars, go check out his channel. Watch a couple of his videos. If you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. 
If you want to get a shout out like Jeff Black Music did, make sure that you go to the shout out request in the video description. Fill out that form and I'll do a shout out on you in a future video. Also, if you have a tutorial request, go to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I need you to do a few things for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Make sure you click on that because it lets other people know that the content in this video is muy bueno. And I need you guys to leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you like. Tell me what's going on. Just leave those things in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back with you. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. After you smash it, click on the bell. That way you get notifications every time I upload content to YouTube and you won't miss out on any other learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.